and secured the Ashes for England as if you didn't know and saw him named Man of the Series. Now he's written a book about his adventures so far. Morning. I actually think it's 3,000 and something England test runs. You do, you don't, you're not keeping count? Um, no, I try not to worry about stuff like that, so just, <gasps> just want to enjoy playing the game. Morning, by the way. Good morning. Um, I love the dedication in your book. Your book is dedicated to one person in particular. Tell us about that. Yeah, um, dedicated to my grandfather. Um, as a kid, obviously the amount of miles and journeys that um, he's had to take me to all the games and everything. So it just sort of be a nice little touch to, you know, just to show my appreciation to all of that, really. And fittingly, over the summer, he was there. Yeah. To he was watch there. it all happen. Yeah, he came to pretty much every test match. Um, been to pretty much every game I've played, so um, it's obviously really nice to, you know, to see him there and to get him in the change room after after we won and things like that. So it was good to get him to be involved and be a part of it all. Oh, there There's he Tom. is. There he is. Yeah. Um, take us back to the beginning because it all. I mean, it didn't all start with a thigh pad, but there was something that you were given very <laughs> early on in your career, which was a sort of an inspiration to you. Yeah. Um, obviously, Michael Vaughan being um, from the same club and from Sheffield. Um, when he retired, he, he passed on one of his old thigh pads, which obviously it doesn't really sound much when you think about an old sweaty um, protective piece of equipment. Yeah. But um, you know, it, was, it meant a lot to me as a young lad growing up. And Is it something of a sort of Yorkshire tr tradition you sort of Mark picked out for greatness because he was given a, a chest protector by is it Jeffrey Boyd. Yeah, or? that's right. Um, so I think I don't think that would work these days. So, so I'm so just wondering if I when the time comes, so you find there's some really good young Yorkshire lad who's coming along well in, in the, the batting order, what, what are you going to give him? I no idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm sure they'll have to think of something down the line. Mm. Right, from, from what happened in the one-day games, for instance, in the World Cup earlier, going out, not only going out in the group stage, but getting beaten by Bangladesh, which had never happened before. And yet, months later, you're coming to terms dealing with New Zealand and then winning the Ashes. Was there, and I know it was a slightly different side, but was there a, a turning point? What was the key to that change? Um, it's hard to put a finger on it, really. I think at uh, the start of the summer, um, we, we, Owen Morgan, the one-day captain, sat us all down and said how he wanted to go and, and approach the, this one-day series. And, um, you know, we, we went and did exactly that. We were really positive. We didn't put any, set any limits or boundaries on what we, what we could achieve. And, and in that first one-day game, we ended up getting, you know, a score of over uh, 400, which is the first time we've ever done it as a side before. And that really gave us, you know, a lot of confidence to... You know, really push all the boundaries and just see what what we really could achieve, and we sort of went from strength to strength from there. And um, from that one day performance, we then took that into the Test series against Australia as well. Mm. And what was it like at hearing that home crowd cheering for you? Amazing. The support throughout was absolutely amazing. Um, you know, some of the atmospheres, at, especially at Edge Bass and then at Trent Bridge, when um, when we got right on top, were were fantastic. And they're, they're something they're the best bits really when you you see all the fans out there enjoying it and. As much as you are out on the field, that's that's what sticks out in my mind, really. Mm. And you were named man of the series. Uh, how how did that feel? I mean, you were the obvious choice, but did you realise you were? And not really. I, I got so absorbed in you know just being a part of such a special team effort. It, it was quite irrelevant, really, to me. For obviously, you want you want to do well personally, but um, that was the most pleasing thing was to be a part of such a special side that you know sort of come across all the, or against all the odds and managed to achieve um, something quite really special. Psychology is a hugely important part of, of, of cricket, but batting in, in particular. And uh, you talked about sort of how you, you don't get nerves, but other very, very good batsmen have had real issues with, with dealing with that part of the game. And, and just, is it done, does that come down to, to training? Does it come to practice? Or is it just a question of who you are? Because the pressure can be immense. Yeah, I, I think it's a, a culmination of everything, really. Um, for me, I like to think or go into the game thinking that you put all of the hours in, in in your practice and you do all that hard work off the field so that when you go out there, you can just go and enjoy the occasion, enjoy it for what it is. Um, remember that as a kid, I've always played the game because I enjoy playing it. And enjoy, That's the key word, though, isn't it? Yeah, Enjoying exactly. Um, and you know, as long as I can continue to have that you know, frame of mind and mentality, then it'll always bring the best out of my cricket. So um, regardless of this situation, that's what I try and take into, um, into the sport. I love the book. I love the book. It talks about your brother and also about the camaraderie um, in the dressing room and naughty things that happen, like sock snipping. Yeah, sock snipping. What <laughs> is... 
Yeah, I'm not. I I, I can't really reveal who who would <laughs> fancy some snipping. What's it? What is sock snipping? Well, I just I think it's what obviously when you're playing a test match and there's a lot of um, a lot of free time on your hands. Um, sometimes you end up at the end of the day putting your you know your socks on and there might be a few holes in the bottom. And they, of them. So and they the, cut with scissors. Yeah, okay. apparently. I'd, and did yeah, Stuart Broad know. ever catch you after you debagged him on camera? Yeah, he, he never actually <laughs> caught me. I mean, I've never ran so fast in my life. We still get away from him, we played but, it um, on breakfast here. Go on. Yeah, so um, I think he's still planning to get me back, which I'm not really looking yeah, for. Make sure we, next time you're in the same side, make sure you're wearing a belt. I will, yeah, I'll have to. Not right. here anyway. Uh, thank you very much. It's no, lovely to see you, you Joe. Thank Thanks you, a lot. Too. Joe's book is called Joe Root, Bringing Home the Ashes.